Hello everyone, Professor Dustin here, and this video is going to be a solution to the bowling conservation problem, which is one of the worst names I've ever had for a whiteboard. So, in this problem, we have a bowling ball hitting a pin, and the idea is that we know what the bowling ball does when it hits the pin, it bounces off, but we don't know what's going on with the pin. So we need to figure out what the components of the pin's velocity is going to be, um, meaning that the components, both the x and y of the pin's velocity, and then after that we want to determine the angle of the pin's final velocity. Well, you can imagine that if we know what the components of the velocity are going to be, then finding the angle is going to be pretty straightforward. So really finding the components of the velocity is going to be the biggest problem. So let's try to get a picture, a final and initial picture here. Uh, initially we have a bowling ball moving towards a pin which is at rest. So I'm going to use a big M for the bowling ball, show the velocity as, uh, where is it, V0. The little m is going to be the pin, and that is going to be one-sixth of the big M. So that's the initial situation. In the final, we have these words, that just after the interaction, the ball's velocity has been deflected by an angle 10 degrees from its original direction of motion. So I think the simplest thing to do there is just draw with the dotted line the original direction of motion like that. And then just show in the final state the ball going off at 10 degrees with respect to that. Uh, call that theta. Call that velocity VB. And we know that the magnitude of that VB is 5 sixths of the original, because that's part of the problem statement. Now what we don't know is we don't know what the speed of this smaller mass is, the pin, as it goes off. So I'm going to write VP question mark. But also notice that it says right in the problem. We want to find the components of the pin's velocity. So we need to find VPY and VPX right there. And I am implying something about a coordinate system with x in this direction and y in that direction, but I think it's pretty clear that that is really what we are uh, looking for here as a good coordinate system. Okay, cool. So how are we going to go about doing this? Tip, this is a typical conservation of momentum case. We have uh, the system consists of two objects, one of mass m, one of mass little m. Um, they interact, meaning they hit each other, they transfer some momentum, but still we have the conservation momentum equation, which is delta p is zero, and that splits into two. Delta P in the X direction is zero, and delta P in the Y direction is zero. Now I don't necessarily know which of these is going to be the best equation to use to solve this problem in the X direction or the Y direction. It may be that I need both. So I'm gonna start out by assuming that I need both and work from there. So let's just start out with the X direction. So that's PXF minus PXI. So I want to write down what the final momentum is in the x direction. Okay, so part of that I certainly don't know. That's the mass of the little pin times the velocity of the little pin in the x direction. But I also have to add to that the mass of the bowling ball times the bowling ball's velocity in the x direction. Right, so that whole thing is the final momentum in the x direction because uh, the pin has that speed and the bowling ball has some component uh, VBX along the x direction um, in the final state. So uh, let me just add in that I actually know what that thing is going to be. VBX is going to be VB times cosine theta. That's because I want, if I want the component of that vector, that's going to be the adjacent to the angle. And then I'm also just going to plug in that I actually know what VB is. It's 5, 6 times V naught cosine theta. So now I'm trying to get all my symbols into the, um, into the same uh, system, meaning that if I can write VB as V naught, V naught is over here too, so I should try to rewrite that. Here too, eventually I'm going to want to replace that little m with that 1, 6 big M. Uh, so anyway, so that was the final momentum in the x direction. Let me also write down the initial momentum in the x direction. That's pretty easy because this mass is not moving initially, so its momentum is zero in the x and y direction. So I have just this mass's momentum in the x direction, so that's going to be minus big M V naught equals zero. So that's the conservation momentum in the x direction. I think before going on, I'm going to see if I can make this simpler by replacing in here 
with that and then make this replacement as well. So I'm just going to rewrite that um, first equation. Which is right there. And actually you can see from this point that things have already turned out pretty nice. Um, so VPX is the component I'm looking for. That's what I don't know up there. But actually I know everything else in this formula. I know what big M is, I know what V naught is, I know what theta is. And actually there's a big M in every term. So I don't even need to know what that is right now. I can just divide by big M in every term. Uh, so great, let me simplify that one more time and see what I've done for this next line is I've just gotten rid of the big M and then pulled out the V naught from two terms that the V naught is in. It's in this one, so I get five, six cosine theta, and it's in this one, I get a minus one right there. Uh, sorry, I actually forgot to put in my VPX right there. So now let's move um, this thing to the other side. And I actually have to be careful, I forgot my minus sign, so this whole thing should be times minus one, because when I move it from this side to the other side, I've got to have another minus one in there. So for my next line, I'll uh, move the minus one through. But I can make one more simplification, that is by multiplying the whole thing times six. So multiply the whole thing times six, we'll kill that six, we'll kill that six, put a minus six here, then I'm going to flip the signs inside because of the minus one. And I immediately get my answer for the x component. So I actually didn't have to do the y component to figure out the x component by itself. So that's a feature of these um, simple collision problems in which there is um, no momentum in the, x in the y direction. Initially, they come out pretty easy like this. All right, and I can also plug that into my calculator and figure out that VPX is about 8.61 meters per second. Okay, so that gives us one of the two components. Of course, we still need to go back and do the y direction to figure out the other component. So let's do that next. So that's PYF minus PYI. Um, so the first thing I want to do is figure out what the uh, final momentum in the y direction is. Okay, there's two components of the final momentum in the y direction, one which is due to the pin and one which is right there and due to the ball. So the pin is going to be little m times vpy, and then I want to add big M times the y velocity of the ball. Of course, that's going to be negative because the ball is going in the negative y direction. So that's going to be minus 5, 6 v naught sine theta. Okay, so that's the final momentum in the y direction. Um, now I should do the initial momentum in the y direction, but initially the system is only moving in the x direction. There's none from the pin and only momentum in the x direction from the ball. So that momentum in the y direction is zero, that momentum in the y direction is zero, the whole thing in the y direction is zero, and this thing is just all equal to zero. Because of the change, of course, is zero. Okay, cool, so this bit now becomes a pretty simple problem. Again, I know what little m is, it's right there. I wanna find out what that is, I know everything in here. Um, so I can do the same kind of deal, move this to the other side and solve for vpy. Okay, so I've put in one six m for the little m and move this thing to the other side. Notice the same thing happens. I get a big M canceling on either side. So again, uh, the mass of the ball does not affect the component um, or the final velocity of the pin. Um, and again, I'm gonna multiply times six here to kill that guy, change this to just five. And I get that for my um, velocity of the pin in the Y direction. Can plug that into my calculator. And I get about 6.95 meters per second. Cool. So that's the answer to part A, the components of the pin in the x and y direction. Now we can real quickly do part B here. Part B is just saying, what is that angle right there? Let's call it phi. Well, that's pretty simple because now we actually know what the two components in the x and y directions are. We have them right there. So for instance, we could use a tangent function. We could write tangent of that angle phi is vpy over vpx. Make sure to get the order of the x and y's correct. 
the opposite over, over adjacent is the definition of the tangent. So just um, put into your calculator the arctan of VPY over VPX, which will be the arctan of that divided by that. And we finally get that the angle is 38.9 degrees. Great, so now we know not only the components of the final of the pin's final velocity, but also the angle at which um, it ricochets away from the direction of motion. And we can see that actually it makes a fair amount of sense. The ball moves only a small amount, moves only 10 degrees away from its direction of motion, but the pin moves a fair amount. And actually the pin is moving quite quickly because the pin has so much lower mass in the ball, one sixth of the ball. Okay, so uh, the upshot here is simply, again, just a conservation of momentum problem between two objects. So we know it's a conservation of momentum problem because they are interacting, therefore they are transferring momentum between each other. And then we just had to be super careful about what the initial was, what the final was, where the components were, um, make sure to get all the negative signs in there. But it's just a matter of falling through the steps of saying delta P equals zero, that's X and Y separately is zero. This delta P is of the entire system. So when I write fine on the X direction, I'm saying the system in the X direction, and then the system in the X direction initial. Make sure you get the components in there correctly, and then you can solve for whatever the unknown uh, variable is. Okay, so I hope that was helpful um, in getting through the solution to this whiteboard problem. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you next time.